everywhere, everywhere present. You know, uh, mind cannot think. So this is uh, a limitation for mind. The saushmiya and vyavadhanat. Vyavadhana means intervention. If something is there in between, the first object will uh, obstruct the second one. It is always like that. And when we see a, an object outside also, we won't see the object completely. We can see only in three dimensions or two dimensions not more than that. So the one or two parts of the object is always missing. It cannot be seen. So Vyavadhana, this is also an obstruction, intervention. Abhibhavat, the suppressed by others. So one object or one uh, thing is uh, suppressed by other. Like uh, the, the light of the stars are not seen when the sunlight or moonlight is there. So this is so called Abhibhavat. And then for the eighth one, the last one, Samana Abhiharat. The same objects are together, the same measurements, same shape. If they are together, it is very difficult to identify the first one, second one, third one, like that. Intermixture of like objects. So they are not, uh, uh, these, these objects are not fit to be uh, perceived separate. It is perceived as one. So these are the eight reasons. I can we can say this is uh, uh, this is some mistakes or some some uh, some reason we can say which uh, we want to see the object correctly. So the first uh, pratyaksha has all these problems. This is all connected to pratyaksha, the perception. Perception has all these uh, problems. Now, why this has been introduced here, so he is uh, giving the reason, the next karika, the karika 8. So all this 8 the reason, so now we will uh, choose uh, some of this like uh, Saukshmiyat and Abhibhavat. So Samana Vihara. So there is reason are uh, more connected to this uh, subject we are going to discuss here. The eighth karika. Saukshmya Tadanu Balabdhir. Tadu Balabhe Mahada di Tachakarium Mahada Sarupam Virupam Why Prakriti is not an object of perception? Why Purusha, Chaitanya, Consciousness is not an object of perception? So actually Chaitanya is even unthinkable. You cannot think about it. So the Saukshmiyad Tadu Anubalabdhi 
because this prakriti is extremely subtle the extreme subtlety of prakriti the saukshmya therefore tad anubalabdhi therefore we cannot uh, perceive it or uh, experience it that tad anubalabdhi balabdhi means it can be uh, perceiving or experience both way upalabdhi it is a uh, apprehension non apprehension of prakriti so tad anubalabdhi so this is the reason we are unable to perceive if we don't know about a, an object we can say it is not there the absence of that object or absence of that thing so it says no na abhava so we can't say that abhava means non existence not because of its own non existence na abhava here always this the uh, panchami is there panchami uh, sometimes used for uh, uh, giving like the cause and because the reason in that case it is uh, fifth case panchami so na abhava not because of non existence so what is non existence we don't see it we don't perceive it so this is there prakriti is there but we are unable to see because it is very subtle the subtle uh, matter is prakriti so na abhava now how we know then it says karyatah tad balabdhe we can infer prakriti by seeing its effects karyatah so karya means effect the product the fruit of any action or any of the reaction can be called karya so one action and then reaction it's also karya so any product produced by any cause is also karya action and reaction and production uh, similarly manifestation the first manifestation and second manifestation third manifestation like that so all called karya in sanskrit so generally a change the manifestation so prakriti has so many manifestations so through manifestations we can infer prakriti if there is no cause no product can be produced if we, if there is a product it means there is a cause so this is the theory this is this theory is called cause and effect theory this is very famous and fully established theory uh, you cannot deny this theory so karyatah tad upalabdhe he from karya from effects we can infer this uh, prakriti and other causes tad upalabdhe now what are the karya what are the products of prakriti so here it is enumerated mahadati tatcha karyam mahadati mahat and etc so mahad is the mahad is the great principle so what is mahad it is a great principle the principle uh, like the prakriti prakriti is the ultimate principle then comes great principle so we have to give some name many of the name may be ourselves made because english there is no name for this so mahat means great as in all dictionary it gives only great 
but here it is not great means it is not an object so now we have uh, give uh, the name at great principle first product of the prakriti so mahat is the first product of the prakriti that we will discuss later what is mahat is so it is uh, the <coughs> prakriti and uh, the universal intelligence universal intelligence samashti buddhi so samashti buddhi and then comes samashti ahankara the universal egoism so like that it goes so mahadati tatcha karyam so mahat and etc are the product of or the effects of prakriti prakriti sarupam virupam cha now there is a rule the effect or the product should carry the original characteristics of the cause the effect cannot be in uh, different character compared to cause this is a general rule the product and the cause as same characteristics when they have the connection so they are modified but character the nature of the object will be the same then if you say that the prakriti has all this uh, uh, effects if they uh, are they same or different so then he gives this reason you see prakriti sarupam cha some objects some products are similar to prakriti similar to prakriti and some are dissimilar to so similar and dissimilar uh, objects are produced by prakriti now we will see the similarity and dissimilarity so what are the similarities the similarities give the reason uh, to connect cause and effect and the similarity give the reason to separate the cause and effect if uh, the effect is very much similar to uh, cause the effect cannot be effect now if effect and cause is the same with, with the, all the characteristics so how can we say the effect is different from the cause and this is cause this is the effect so you cannot say that therefore there should be some similarities and there will be some dissimilarity so therefore prakriti sarupa some are sarupas similar and some are dissimilar so this way the prakriti is inferred and the existence of prakriti is also inferred by the existence of effects it is called karya anumeya this is what we learn from sankhya darshan because this cause and effect theory uh, is although it is there in upanishads also in many places it is there but as a philosophy as a theory as a formula this sankhya has established it and vedanta and other philosophers they took from sankhya this theory of cause and effect ha yeah. so mahadadi tatcha karyam prakriti sarupam virupam cha so in this karika ishvara krishna mentions mainly two points first point is this prakriti and the uh, similar principles are not perceived because they are very subtle that is one point the second point the existence of all these principles although they are in subtle form they can, uh, they are not uh, perceived by normal uh, uh, sense organs functions but they are always there 
their non existence cannot be accepted they are always exist in this way through the anuman so two things we know from this so saukshmya and uh, existence of the principal characters uh, uh, karya and karana so karya we have the experience and then karana also uh, comes there so this is the eighth karika now the ninth karika is giving an important philosophy important the theory of satkaryavada satkaryavada so as just now i mentioned we don't have the experience of prakriti and purusha but we cannot deny prakriti and purusha nobody can deny if the karya is the product is connected to the cause whatever maybe then before the product is produced where it was it was in uh, karana or karma itself or it was not there in the karana after the uh, action of production it came out so we did something and the product came out that is what we see the clay we bring the clay when we see the clay there is no pot in that we say it is clay but after uh, some action uh, some mixing it or whatever giving some shape to it so after some action the potter maker uh, does some action on that so after after the activity of producing the pot is seen then we say the pot is there so before that we say there is no pot the no pot means what does it mean the absence of pot non existence of pot that is what we understand now. so before the birth of the karya the karya the product was not there that is what we understand normally this normal understand if that is the case then we cannot state that cause carries the product why was seeing the clay the uh, the uh, the clay in front of us the clay for the pot what is brought to make the uh, pot seeing that we say now there is no pot in that it's only clay there is no name used as pot whoever sees it always people they whoever sees it they say no there is no pot in that it means in our understanding our perception the absence of clay absence of pot is seen on the clay you are getting me what i am saying huh? so though there are three things one is clay second is pot and now third the perception the absence of pot so where we see the absence of pot huh in the on the clay on the clay we see the absence of pot now absence of pot we say okay there is uh, on the uh, clay there is absence of pot it's correct now where is pot then in the clay huh <laughs> so you are saying absence of pot on the clay and then now where is pot 
you, because yes. you are saying that there is no part in the clay or on the clay. Okay. It is in our yes. mind. It is in the potential form. Ah, it is in the potential form. So now, uh, then the question is, what we know when we see the clay that there is no pot in the clay, is this perception, e cognition is right or no? So a correct cognition or wrong cognition? No. So when we see the clay, the amount of clay that which is there, the heap of clay, uh, seeing that we say there is no pot in the clay, is it right or wrong? This cognition is right or wrong? Huh? Ah, this is a there is a problem in this. <laughs> so you cannot say it is right and you cannot say it is wrong. <laughs> so therefore, here two opinions come in this situation. Seeing the heap of clay which uh, to be produced in the form of pot and other vessels. Uh, to be produced, it is in future. Uh, so therefore you have to follow my words. Eh? If you don't understand anything, just uh, uh, raise the hand. Uh, so for my language and the connection, the, uh, the, the, uh, what do you say, the sentence you have to follow. So the first sentence what we say, on the clay or in the clay, there is no pot. This is our first perception or understanding. See the heap of clay. Now, uh, when we deny the absence of clay, absence of pot, we deny the absence of pot on the heap of clay, we are seeing something there. What is the same pot we are seeing there? So the pot is there in our mind and the mind says, this heap of clay can be produced in the form of pot. So now there is a contradiction. What is the contradiction? Pot is not there. Pot is not there, but pot is uh, seen there or seen in the in the abstract form it means you have some idea some connection some idea about this heap of clay under the pot it is called abstract pot to be produced pot or would be pot it is seen there so this is a very difficult state where the philosopher Philosophers differ their opinion. Some philosophers say the pot is always there in the heap of clay which would be produced in the form of pot. I am adding this into because any heap of clay we don't have. We are, we are seeing a special uh, heap of clay which is to be produced in the form of pot. So in that they say there is no pot before the production, the absence of pot in that, that heap of clay. That is one opinion. The another opinion, another philosopher say there is pot in the heap of clay. It is abstract, it is unseen, unmanifested. So the unmanifested, abstract uh, pot is there, we cannot deny that. When the production comes, though after the production, the unmanifested uh, pot takes the form as manifested. It means you are not totally bringing a new or a totally uh, new thing as a pot. You are only removing the 
cover or removing the obstructions which was obstructing the form of the pot you got it ah it's very interesting so now it's a little more uh, uh, different uh, one different uh, example you can see like uh, you might have seen how this uh, uh, stone uh, uh, murtis are made so there will be a big black stone or uh, marble stone so as a piece of stone then this uh, 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 what do you have to say sculpture. Uh, sculpture they they do their work there on they just uh, do their work make it as a mood make it as some shape they whatever they think they uh, bring it out so now the question is that particular shape is it uh, is was uh, was it there or not so how uh, what we can say the particular shape which was there in the mind of that artist was it there or not it was there what he did he only removed the obstructions the obstructions he removed by his work then the form appeared it was there he is not adding anything into that what does it mean if he is not bringing anything from outside it means it, it is there it was there so he is only bringing out the shape by removing the obstruction by removing the cover then the shape is out this is the second uh, philosopher's uh, argument so this is the two way the first argument it says asat karyavata before production there is no product as it is the product is made out from absence of product the product is produced from its own absence of product this is called asat karyavata the first opinion first argument many of the philosophers say this especially buddha buddha uh, buddha nyaya nyaya vaisheshika all they say this and the second uh, argument second opinion is the product is always there in the cause the state of unmanifested form the for product is always there it is only uh, revealed or recovered it is there and the cover is removed the removing the cover removing the obstruction is said to be production producing and in asat karyavata the argument uh, the theory of absence of product before producing there they say the producing is the creation of totally new object there is no object before the object is produced by the action of production so this is to argument now which one you like more here to all this satkaryavada satkaryavada okay this is fine so uh, now we go for this satkaryavada in the in philosophers sankhya vedanta and yoga they also mimamsa also they say but they have little difference but 
three of this sankhya uh, your vedanta and yoga philosophy they accept this satkaryavada and vedanta go goes little further actually vedanta as sat karanava it means for vedanta there is no production at all always the karan of the atma brahman is there you see some uh, manifestation some changes in there that's all so we don't have a original production as karya as a product it means uh, real product there is no real product we have unreal product so product is there but unreal and sankhya and yoga say uh, they have a real uh, cause and real product uh, prakriti is also real and the product is also real for us the prakriti is the karanam the cause is real but effect is unreal so therefore vedanta uh, should be sat karana vata so therefore satyadananda sat brahma is always there so names and forms are only but you say uh, it is it is only imagination or imagination is a, a superficial uh, manifestation super ghost manifestation so therefore it uh, it is in your mind when you think about that it comes out and when you see the original cause in that the product itself disappear so this is called vivartavada superimposed product production or cause and theory it is superimposed and here uh, the sankhya has uh, original manifestation theory as in science we have no all other uh, philosophers they follow the original manifestation theory this mean real manifestation theory the manifestation is happening there other than vedanta all other philosophers believe in real manifestation theory and only vedanta says superimposed manifestation theory it means superimposition happens in the mind so mind here creates the objects and when mind itself sees the cause the original cause in that product the product as it is disappears it has no reality disappearing means it doesn't mean they are no you are not seeing it you are seeing it but the reality is not there the mind changes the reality in to different realm so the when the mind changes the production disappears like when you are in sleep you have many objects in the sleep when you have come out of that uh, state of mind those those objects are not there they just disappear similarly it happens here this is all called uh, a superimposed uh, theory of that vivartavada and here the satkaryavada in sankhya and yoga is based on manifestation theory the original manifestation theory real manifestation theory real manifestation theory means it it changes actually it changes that's what it says hmm so uh the pre existent existence of product is called satkarya the sat means pre existence before producing it satkarya vada so the ninth karika asadakaranadupadana grahana शक्यक 
कारण भावाच्च सत्कार्यम् Vedanta also we have uh, this discussion uh, based on this karika in Satkaryavada uh, all the arguments given here is adopted by Vedanta Asad Akaranat Ubadana Grahanat Sarva Sambhava Bhavat Shaktasya Shakya Karanat Karana Bhavat Satkar now one, two, three, four, five reasons are there. Why the product should be pre-existing before it is produced. So these five reasons are there. Asad Akaranat. Asad means, Sad means which has existence or existent. It's called Sat. And Asad means non-existent. So Asad Akarana. The non-existent cannot be produced. Non-existent cannot be produced. So Asad Akarana. Because non-existent object cannot be brought into existence. How can we uh, bring non-existence into existence? It is not possible. So that is first reason. And the second reason, upadana grahana. When someone wants to produce something, he takes the material which is uh, efficient to produce the object he wants. Like somebody wants to produce a pot, he goes to the clay and make ready the clay, he uh, collects sufficient clay and bring and then make it. If he, he wants uh, to produce a pot, he will not go to the river and collect water because water cannot, from out of water you cannot pro produce a pot or out of air you cannot produce a pot. So to produce a pot you need a particular cause. It means the producer who is intended to produce, the producer sees the production or uh, production of his object in that particular material cause. So he sees it. It means it is there. It is there so he sees it. He knows that I can bring out this particular object from this particular material cause. So this is called Upadana Grahana. Upadana means material cause, the material cause which, which is efficient to produce the desired object, that is Upadana Grahana. This is one reason we cannot deny. And Sarva Sambhava Bhava, then the third reason is given. If you say from non-existence, one can bring out the existence of an object, if you say that, non-existence of everything is there everywhere. Non-existence, can we limit non-existence? The non-existent cannot be delimited. Here you see, here is non-existence of horse, non-existence of human, non-existence of pot, non-existence of so many things, uncountable. And here is also the other You see, wherever, where the object is not there, 
the non existence is freely available everywhere if you can bring an existence from a non existence there is no need to do anything just sit in a place and produce from non existence existence no even to grasp this idea is also difficult because we have we have not uh, done such a thought process in our life <laughs> so so first time we are thinking about the how from non existence the existence has come so he say sarva sambhava bhava sarva sambhava means all uh, the production of everything and the uh, the absence of the production of everything by every means the absence of everything is there everywhere it means wherever from wherever we want we can produce anything that is what sarva sambhava but it is not happening if someone wants to produce something he needs the particular material to produce the desired object he cannot produce from the absence the object he cannot produce if he could produce from the absence so we can uh, produce so much of uh, gold uh, out of in the uh, absence it is not possible uh, it, it, it is not possible therefore sarva sambhava bhava therefore what what we should uh, uh, think what we should believe is there is some reason some connection with the production and the object the particular object can produce another similar object or something like that so that is called sarva sambhava abhava okay three reasons are completed now say shaktasya shakya karana shaktasya shakya karana shakta means which has the potency to produce the object any of the object like the heap of clay has the poten potency to produce a pot or anything like that so in that case we can say the clay is potent regard with the pot so shakta means potent or competent the competent means that is also potent it, it is giving uh, uh, some production or something is there it has some potency so shakta is you can say efficient also shakta means efficient or potent or competent so shaktasya shakya karana if we want to produce uh, oil so we take this uh, till you know sesame or uh, sarsu uh, sarsu what we say in mustard uh, mustard or whatever if we see that there is oil in that uh, or even our nariyal uh, coconut uh, so we see oil in that then we take this is a potent it has the potency of that production so therefore shaktasya shakya karana shakya means what is producible producible is called shakya and the potent or the cause of that is called shakta so shaktasya shakya karana because in sanskrit you, know, you have so much of so i choice of making all this mm. small word you can communicate much mm. so shaktasya shakya karana ha shakya and only you see some difference or shakya or yakara and takara is different so one has the shakta takara and the other has the shakya yakara and then the changes so a shakta means potent or uh, the source of production or cause of production and shakya means pro producible 
the object. So this way it is called as Shaktasya Shakya Karana. Karana Bhavacha Satkaryam. And the fifth reason that you have to accept Satkarya is Karana Bhavacha. Effect is always there with the cause or effect has the nature of the nature of cause. So therefore karana bhava. Karana bhava means the nature of cause. Effect has the nature of cause. It means before producing it, it was in the same nature. Now it seems to be in another form. But Actually, the nature is the same. The nature cannot be changed. The essential nature, the saruba, saruba cannot be changed. And what can be changed? We say, uh, you know, our manifestation or uh, whatever uh, names and forms and shapes can be changed. But the essential nature, the, uh, the, 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 the root cause of that cannot be changed. So therefore, karana bhavacha, the characteristics of the cause is continued or brought to the brought into the uh, product. So when we see the product, we infer the characteristics of the karana. Similarly, seeing the products or manifestation in this creation, through this we infer the characteristics of the original cause, the ultimate cause, Prakriti. So in this creation there are Sattva, Rajas, Tamas manifestations. So through this, uh, step by step, we infer ultimate cause as Mula Prakriti. So this is the Karana Sattva, Akarya Sattva and then Karana Sattva and karana become karya, but karana never changes its characteristics. If karana changes, the cause changes its characteristics, then we have no trace to cast the karana. We cannot, we don't, we don't know how, from what it came. Because karana, because cause never changes its characteristics, when it it is in the form of uh, product. Therefore, we could, we are able to infer or able to know the cause. The same theory we use in Vedanta. Vedanta says, you are only seeing Sattva Rajas Tamas in creation. Uh, the, uh, the Sanjaya argues like that. But we see only Satchidananda in Creation. So we say this Satyadananda and it came from Satyadananda and it exists in Satyadananda and is always Satyadananda. Therefore, Satyadananda is the cause of creation. And they say the Prakriti is the cause of creation. This is the difference. Only the cause and effect differ, but uh, the theory is the same. The Satkarna theory or Satkarya theory or this cause and effect theory, both are same. Okay, we we'll see next Kariga tomorrow. Om Purnamadha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudasya Dev Purnasya 